Thank you. Hi, good afternoon, city councilors. My name is Cecilia, and I'm commenting on the budget as a resident of Indianapolis in District 12, I'm represented by Council President Bob Ossoli. As a social worker, the concerns that compel me to speak today are how the budget reflects the priorities of our leadership. Social service projects like the Mobile um, Crisis Action Team, which had really stunning results for mental health crises in the cities, are not receiving an increase in funding to build capacity. This program is a direct care initiative that diverts people in crises from entering the prison system, and it's working with a budget that can only staff 2,500 people for a city of over 900,000. In the same budget, we are increasing funding by $14 million more million to IMPD. The fact that they are being allocated 40% of our city budget when the needs of the community, pedestrian and cycling safety, better roads and infrastructure, publicly funded, rent, excuse me, publicly funded housing rental assistance programs are staring us in the face at every corner is disrespectful and does not reflect the needs of our community. Um, for example, it would only t cost 2% of the budget to house all 1,700 homeless people in our streets. Hoosiers in Indianapolis also deserve a clean city with safety measures that are up to date and tailored to pedestrians. We deserve and pay taxes to utilize efficient and accessible public transportation. Our taxes fund a majority of the city's operations and I will express plainly that we don't want to see more police in Indianapolis. We don't want essential services like the MCAT to run understaffed and underfunded. And we especially do not want $12.8 million to fund Israel's genocide in Palestine. As a result, it is abundantly clear that the council did not seek democratic input from working class people in the city when developing the budget. And the proposal realizes a grim divide between the city council and the community. This budget has made myself and my neighbors very aware of the priorities of our elected leaders, and we will not accept where our money is being diverted without challenge. Thank you. Thank you. Hi everyone, um, my name is Aya. I'm a resident of Indianapolis, currently living in District 7, um, and my district counselor is John Barth. Um, I'm here today to discuss some of the concerns I have with the 2025 city budget that I'm sure a lot of us have as well. Um, first, I wanna state that it should not be overlooked that this budget is greatly underfunding many programs that we in the city struggle for. This has been an unchanging factor that halts the growth of our city and people each year. In the budget, it stated that the IMPD will begin to receive a 4% increase from last year's budget, totaling $338 million, while policing overall will be 41% of the total budget. Um, I'm concerned that this increase will be wasted on the IMPD who, rather than serving and protecting us, waste their time terrorizing indie residents, especially those that are black and brown with no consequences. I hope others will agree that this increase should go toward programs better equipped with handling the growing mental health crises around the city, seeing that the individuals going through these crises and their family members that call the police to seek help have been the greatest victims of IMPD brutality. Programs like the clinician-led community response team, who have been, who would be able to expand to all parts of the city with this funding. I'm also concerned with the way the city has handled our collective efforts to call to an end to funds to Israel, a foreign country that is not only using funds that we in the city so desperately need um, to pay for time and support from our politicians, but are also using these funds to bomb and attack anyone they want. It is your responsibility to work in the interest of your constituents, but also in the interest of human rights. Your lack of support for a ceasefire resolution and yearly funding of Israel is a direct disregard of your responsibilities and shows that your priorities are not in line with ours. As we continue to talk about the budget, I think it is important that we prioritize those who need, the help, who need help the most. Mayor Hawkstead has continuously showed that his priorities are not for the safety of the city, but to continue fun, to fund people like Prosecutor Mears, who is best known for ignoring black voices while locking the doors of his public office as we desperately call for the protection, for the prosecution of murderous cops. Thank you. My name is Noah Leininger. I live in Councillor Ossoli's district, and I'm an organizer with the Party for Socialism and Liberation. And we are opposed to this budget that declares war on the working people of Indianapolis and actually defunds the people fixing potholes. Now, no one can accuse this council of ever defunding the police, though. 
Not when you have consistently advanced budgets that increase the budget for IMPD and the sheriff's office, no matter what, whether it was David Bessard, the night IMPD murdered Ashlyn Lisby, Mikhail Rose, and Drejan Reed all within hours, Ashlyn by running her down in a police cruiser being driven recklessly by Jonathan Henderson, who never faced any kind of charges or accountability, which really makes me think that all this talk from you guys about the street takeovers being such a danger really falls flat to me. To Gary Harrell, Freddie Davis, Joseph Flyguy Steiger, and Rodney Huffman, who just died, neighbors of ours killed by reckless drivers who won't get their cars towed or threatened by Chris Bailey at a press conference, all because they too have a badge. Then there's the cops that you have in here right now to intimidate us or try and drag us out for drawing connections between the struggle against the violence funded by our taxes here in Indianapolis to the violence funded with our taxes in Palestine, the violence funded by this budget, and the violence funded by our federal government, which is sending bombs to genocide Gaza and expand the war into Lebanon. Compared to last year's actual budget, a yes vote on this budget is a vote to defund the Indianapolis Fire Department, to defund DPW, trash disposal, OPHS, urban farms and groups fighting food apartheid, the election board, so much for Democrats caring about democracy, the Party for Socialism and Liberation votes no on this budget that defends services that the people need so that you can further fund our killers and deepen our repression. And I would invite in the last couple seconds that everybody come out to the Liberation Center at 1800 North Meridian Street this Thursday at 6 p.m. to hear from union leaders and workers organizers you, to hear about what real democracy could look like. Sir. Because it's sure not this. Thank you. Free Palestine. <laughs> Good evening, council members. My name is Bridget O'Reilly, and I live in District 7, represented by, represented by Councilor John Barth. I'm here today to address the glaring issues in the proposed 2025 city budget and to demand accountability from our city's leadership. This budget at $1.65 billion continues to fail the people of Indianapolis, particularly women and working class families. Over 40% of it, more than half a billion dollars, goes to policing. Meanwhile, essential services like mental health care, housing, and public transportation are underfunded. For instance, the Mobile Crisis Action Team, which provides critical mental health support, will see no expansion despite its proven need. And housing for our homeless neighbors? Only 200 units for over 1,700 people, a fraction of what is needed. It would cost less than 2% of the budget to house everyone currently living on the streets, yet this administration chooses to criminalize poverty instead of solving it. But this is more than just a budgetary oversight. It reflects an administration that consistently fails to prioritize the needs of working women and families. Under Democratic Mayor Joe Hogsett's leadership, resources that could be going toward affordable ch child care, health care, or housing are instead directed toward a system that neglects us. The mayor's office culture, recently revealed to be rife with misogyny and abuse, is no exception. The same budgetary decisions that leave services underfunded are mirrored in the culture of disregard for women's safety within this administration. How can we trust the current leadership to address the needs of working women when the city's leadership itself is embroiled in a scandal where sexual harassment complaints are ignored? I call, I call on more of the good people in Indianapolis to stand with me and all working women to call for Mayor Hogsett to resign. The mayor's policies, much like his actions, continue to harm the women in the city by failing to provide the services that we need to live safely and thrive. Despite calls for his departure, Mayor Hogsett's refusal to resign mirrors his refusal to prioritize the needs of the people of Indianapolis. We need a budget that truly reflects our needs, housing, mental health care, and transportation, not one that serves the interests of the elite and protects abusers. Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Riley Park, and I'm a graduate student at UND and a resident of Indianapolis. I'm here tonight to de demand three things. Fund our communities, not IMPD. Two, Mayor Hogsett needs to resign. Three, pass a ceasefire resolution and all, and all city and state aid to Israel. All $12.8 million of it. Our communities need leaders who are accountable to the people. Mayor Hogsett is not accountable to the people. He has allowed for serial sexual abusers to be in his administration for years. He must go. The city must also end its partnership with the state of Israel and end its $12.8 billion aid. The city is funding 
the genocide of the Palestinian people and also fun, uh, funding racist po uh, police violence in our streets. This must end. Finally, I would like to call out the egregious behavior of this council last month when I was forced out by the sheriffs and Council President uh, Osley. These officers put their hands on my chair without regard to the damage that they could have caused. They also did this to a friend of mine who also uses a wheelchair. This type of behavior is undemocratic, ableist, and it shows the complete disregard for the people of this city. Know that the people of the city are the ones who elected you, and you serve us, not the, way, not the other way around. Remember that. Thank you. Hello, my name is Stephen Lane, and I live in Council President Bob Osley's district in Hallville, which is an under-resourced and over-policed neighborhood on the near west side. I manage a small art gallery on the near north side, and I come today to join workers in the art community in support of more funding for the arts. Every year, the arts organizations stretch themselves thin to fund opportunities for local artists to make a decent living. Artists make our city more vibrant and colorful. The fact that $1.3 million is being allocated out of a budget of $1.65 billion is egregious. This is the same amount allotted to the arts from 2024 when the budget was $1.56 billion, essentially slashing the arts budget after accounting for inflation. I stand with the workers here today to not ask for more money, but demand that our council and, and mayor do their jobs to better support workers, especially in the arts. The, there is no reason that Israel receives $12.8 million with our tax money to fund genocide and the local arts receives only $1.3 million. There is no reason that a country on the other side of the world <laughs> receives more support than the workers that live right here locally in Indianapolis. You, should, you could also move money from the IMPD and sheriff's budget, which is 41% of the total budget to fund the arts, which makes up 0.07% of the budget. Louisville, Louisville's budget is significantly larger than ours with $5 million allocated to the arts. Other cities of comparable size like Denver and Cincinnati have comparably large, much larger budgets allocated to the arts, which is reflected in the amount of cultural activities available to residents and tourists alike. It really shows where this council's priorities lie, which is not in supporting the workforce, but finding ways to criminalize us. With the exception of Councilor Jesse Brown, we deserve better representation in the government and the arts deserves more support, but I doubt we can expect that with the poor leadership we currently have. Hello, my name is Eli Mori and I'm an organizer with Answer Indiana, which stands for Act Now to Stop War and End Racism. Uh, I would like to speak up today about the connection between our city budget and the ongoing genocide in Gaza. This is relevant to the conversation about the local budget because Indianapolis currently spends over $12 million in Indianapolis taxpayer money every year to buy bonds which support the Israeli military. Indiana as a whole has increased its spending on Israel this year from 65 million to over 100 million. That money could be spent on public works, infrastructure, education, environmental sustainability, and so many other projects that could better the lives of people in our city. Instead, just like how the city spends over 40% of its budget on policing in order to wage war on the poor working class and black and immigrant neighborhoods in our city, valuable funds are being spent to support war crimes against innocent civilians in Palestine and potentially spark a regional war in the Middle East. This war has been ongoing for over 11 months now. City councilors, our city, cities across the country have passed ceasefire resolutions in favor of an immediate ceasefire. This would be a meaningful, if symbolic, gesture of peace on the part of the city council. Taking investment in Israeli bonds out of our city budget would be an even more concrete step. But for some reason, it seems that our city councilors are determined to stand on the wrong side of history. I've heard that many councilors are refusing to sign on to a ceasefire resolution because it's too quote unquote divisive. I'm not sure how calling for an end to a genocide is divisive. How is calling for an end to the indiscriminate murder of men, women, and children divisive? is saying that we should not be spending tens of millions of dollars of Indiana taxpayer money 
on to, spit, to support an apartheid regime on the other side of the world divisive is standing up for basic human rights and dignity divisive. If you do believe, in fact, that that is divisive, city, county, councilmen, and women, it's time to ask yourselves, which side of that divide do you stand on? How would you like history to remember you? As people of conscience who chose to raise your voices on behalf of the oppressed or as accomplices in the greatest crime yet seen in the 21st century? Finally, I'd like to point out that a large majority of Americans, over two thirds, are in favor of a, an Sir, immediate ceasefire you. resolution. Sir. To speak out in support of this resolution would be half of your constituency. <laughs>